They'll have to get through me. It's Harry Warmonger, and welcome to my Leonard Guide. I hope some of you guys at home can learn a little something from this tutorial I put together. Enjoy the video, guys. I don't want to delay it any longer. Feel free to leave any comments below. Let's begin with the basics. Items. For starting items, I buy a relic and three HP potions. The HP potions here look like a biscuit due to a mastery and the utility tree. I prefer the warding trinket over the sweeping lens early game. This is so I could ward the bush against pesky supports like Blitzcrank or Sona and also ward the river so we could see any incoming ganks. In the next buy, I upgrade Relic to Targons and take Sidestone. If you can only choose one, consider the pros and cons. Targons provides more sustain and gold gain. Meanwhile, Sidestone offers map control and survivability. If you're not sure, you can't go wrong with Sidestone. For boots, I usually get tabbies as I'm in the face of fights. Though in some cases, I get mobility if I need that extra speed. I don't get shreds because of my 15% tenacity defensive mastery. When I upgrade my sightstone, I trade in my warding trinket for those sweeping lens. Remember, the exchange between tier 1 trinkets are free, but a cooldown is applied before you could use it. Face of the Mountain has a usable that allows you to grant one ally a shield that later explodes and deals damage, so there are both defensive and offensive uses. Omen is probably one of the best tank items. Apart from its defensive stats, it's because of two things, it's passive and active. Its passive reduces an attacker's attack speed, and its active slows all nearby enemies. Picture this. Leona Gap closes with her E, stuns her target, then her ult catches two, maybe three guys. She then strides quickly to her next target, and this time pops Omen slow. In just a matter of seconds, their entire team is either stunned or slowed. This you see you offer your team greatly controls team fights. Though against teams that have mostly AP damage, Omen may not be ideal. Veil, on the other hand, is great against magic heavy teams, especially if you're the initiator for your team. I tend to buy Locket over Veil, however, because of the Locket's awesome Emrys aura passive and shield active. Mikkels is an item that provides some magic resist to yourself, but also has an active that removes crowd control effects and heals a single target. Talisman of Ascension is great if you need movement to engage or disengage fights, generally used against enemies that need movement speed like Udyr. Thornmail vs Heavy AD Teams Example Enemy Team Comp, Top Riven, Talon Mid, Zin Jungle, and AD Bot The example built below is just one build of many. Remember that it's important to build to your game and not to follow a strict item build. I start off with Q, Leona Stun. This is great if your team wants to invade level 1 and also to ward off any early ganks by a jungler. For example, Zin or Volibear who typically try to gank within the first 4 minutes. My second skill is either E or W. Most often E, because at level 2, with Leona's magic damage passive, a potential first blood, especially in low ELO, is definitely possible. If, however, you're getting harassed by a strong lane, then you may want to grab W second instead, because of its defensive abilities. In all cases, I max W first for tankiness, then Q for lower CD, and lastly E, and of course my ultimate when possible. For masteries, I run 0, 21, 9. Take note of the bottom mastery in the defense tree. It grants 15% tenacity. Because of this, I don't take merc treads. For runes, I stack flats all around. Flat armor marks, flat health seals, flat magic resist glyphs, and flat armor quints. Though in some games, I do run MS quints instead. For summoner spells, exhaust and flash are a must. Exhaust allows you to reduce enemy damage output, and its slow can be used for CC. Closing the gap between you and your target is essential on a disabler tank like Leona. Flash can help you achieve this. Make sure you ward before starting any objective. For dragons, some spots are below topside blue and rake bush. Wards can also be used during team fights to prepare against an enemy attack. Warding before lane push as a safety precaution, but in this case, our Wraith Ward got us two kills. Locket of Iron Solari is a great item against magic heavy teams. Its active grants nearby allies a shield that can be just enough to save their lives. Face of the Mountain has an active that grants one ally a shield. At end game, these shields typically absorb about 300 damage, depending on your build. A great item to protect your squishies. 
Mikkel's is a great counter item against heavy CC teams. It removes CC effects and also provides a small heal on the target when used. It can sometimes be enough to save a life. The Orca Lens Trinket upgrade is essential against invisible champions that can really use their invisibility to turn teamfights around, for instance Akali, LeBlanc, or Wukong. For enemy actives, the Zhanyas is easily countered by a well-timed ultimate. Sometimes you may want to wait for your enemy to use their gap closer before you use yours, just so you don't get juked. If you try to gap close with your E and miss, there's a short delay before you can walk again. So sometimes, it may be better to simply walk up and just Q your enemy if he's in close range. Maokai roots Corky and I save my stun. I do this because I want to save it for the damage dealer and not for the tank. Katarina proves me right by showing up just a second later, and luckily because of that play, Corky lives. In low HP situations, sometimes it's better to just Q stun before running. I could have potentially died just then if I didn't stop Katarina from her ult. Sometimes obstacles will be in the way. Take advantage of the range on your R for an over the wall assist. The R is also great to use to counter against champions with channeling ults. This is another example of Leona's ultimate range. You can see how he caught Cho and Braum here. I wouldn't be able to have done so if I used my gap closer instead of my ultimate thirst. Another one of my favorite uses is when an enemy just uses their escape to initiate. As you just saw, I clearly capitalized on that mistake. Because of our reaction on Corky's misplay, we win the team fight. Exhaust an enemy before they use their skills. Timing is essential as exhausts a half second earlier than intended can result in less reduced enemy damage and thus a potential death on your team. Sometimes, you'll need to use your exhaust even when you're full HP. I need Nazis' damage to kill Cho, but Cho can trade. So I burn my exhaust to ensure a 1 for none. Generally, in early lane fights, it's easier to secure a kill on the support rather than the AD, though you have to consider if their AD can kill you during the time you're focusing on the support. But also take other considerations like summoner spells, enemy mid position, enemy jungle position, and top teleport. Take advantage when the enemy support is vulnerable, when they're out of position warding, or when their AD is MIA. In the ideal situation where you kill the AD, you deny them not only of the experience, but also the gold from farming, thus giving you an edge in lane, dragon control, and more. But because of the nature of AD champions having escapes, long ranges, and other reasons, in some cases it may be more viable to just target the support, and then afterwards deprive the enemy AD from farming experience by means of zoning. Cooperating with your jungle during ganks can be the key to winning laning phase. Sometimes you'll want to initiate before the jungler arrives within range because of your ability to stun lock. Here's a clip of me focusing the AD carry during a lane fight. Ask your AD to trade hits before you last it. You can then use your relic stacks to heal him. To maximize gold gain, reserve a stack for the cannon, which spawns every 3 waves, or CS a melee creep. Don't allow the stacks to sit unused for a long period of time. If you're a top side base, keep an eye out for this type of bottom side board control. Ward before dragon to safely secure the objective. A pink ward, or a quick trinket sweep before starting major objectives, is recommended to safely complete them. You can take advantage of counter ganks with Leona's stunlock while your AD guns them down, though because of the heal from Corky and Nami, Brand unfortunately lives.
You gain bonus defense and magic resist when you use your shield, so your effective HP is actually higher than how it appears. I engaged because of this idea, and after using my stun and exhaust, I quickly back out. Kalista ults me and I launch myself straight to Graves, with the goal to disable the biggest threat on the enemy team. You'll see me ward just above here, and in Wraithbush. I do this because Katarina is missing. It's likely she's around hiding somewhere, and it would be not good for the team if she had positioning over us. When she eventually joined the fight, she's my main focus and I stunned her immediately after she starts channeling. In this team fight, I focus Kat. After I jump in, I get out of the AoE, but close enough to jump in again when my CDs are up. You'll also notice me walking up a bit after I jump on Vlad. I do this to position myself in case he flashes upwards. Here I stun focus Akali, a high damage shielding champion. RAD Ezreal then gets a quick pick. At first, you'll see me zone Lee Sin. Vagar, a much bigger threat, then shows up. So, I switch focus to him, then we secure the kill. Knowing when to switch focus is essential to be a good support. Early in the fight, I'm a peeler where I try to protect Jinx from Renekton. When she dies, my role changes from a peeler to a zoner, protecting Zac when his passive activates. Here's a tip. After you get your CC off, position yourself so you're ready to disable again for when your CC resets cooldown. In other words, stay close to your target even if your team is a bit behind cleaning up their last pick. Low ELO players would chase after the Zin, thinking it's a free kill. But you should really know how much of a gap you can close. Knowing Zin's too far, I go for the Draven and Vlad engagement instead. After I Ian stun Vlad, you'll notice me move on to assist mode. I figure that Nar and V are enough to kill Vlad, and that my disables could be used elsewhere. You'll notice me save my stun for the possibility of Katarina joining the fight. After she's gone, my role changes from a disabler to a peeler, helping our Ezreal against Vlad. I don't stay after I stun, as it would be unlikely for both of us to kill him. Here I stay on Annie, but after Riven starts focusing her, I switch to Graves. Then I run ahead as a preemptive measure to catch any potential escapees. After Braum, I go straight for Morgana without pause, a perfect example of keeping your eyes ahead during a team fight. During this team fight, I prepare myself to disable Katarina or Graves, preferring to disable a spin top any day over the Jim Rayner. After she gets zoned from the fight, I target Graves, but I do keep my eyes open for Katarina for the possibility of her re-entering the fight. Here I bullied Cho'Gath and Graves out of this fight. Because of the nature of their champions, Cho is skill based, Grave is an AD, I chose to stun Cho'Gath and exhaust Graves. In some cases, you'll be in fights with low HP. Quickly use your disables, then back out. Fights with low HP should not always be avoided, especially if you know your enemy cooldowns. You can leave fights and come back in when threatening targets are focusing on your allies, or if their skills are on CD, or if they're simply disabled. Vi and Annie could normally wreck me in any normal situation. But because of their current HP and cooldowns, I take advantage of this situation. Though I don't push my luck and I back out as soon as I see Blitzcrank. In this low HP engagement, I stay close enough to re-engage but far enough to keep safe. 
I waited for the enemy Lee Sin to use his abilities before I entered the fight. In this push, Katarina jumps in when we're all extremely low. Instead of running away, I Q him. Take a look at how low we all are. I'm sure my team would not have appreciated if I had instead panicked and just run instead of cancelling his ult. Once again guys, it's Harry Warmonger here and thank you so much for tuning in. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video I put together. If you did, hit that subscribe button, like us on Facebook, follow our Twitter account, and most importantly, spread word to your friends about us. I plan on hosting a giveaway soon and I'd hate for you guys not to be informed. So subscribe for the latest. Thanks once again for watching guys. The next tutorial is on its way and I'll see you guys next time.